Hey y'all, and welcome back to Cooking Champagne. Today's video is a little bit of a different kind of video. I thought it'd be really fun because these are videos that I love watching, and those are what we like have for dinner in a week, like a week's worth of what's for dinner. And I love watching those kind of videos, so I was like, you know what? Why don't we try them out? It's really weird filming here by myself. Normally, for those of you who may not know, I film my regular like cooking videos and stuff at my sister's Monday night. I look like crap. Today has definitely been a Monday. I'm doing a roasted pork tenderloin. I thought about doing it on the barbecue pit, but I decided not to. And I'm gonna fix with that some roasted potatoes with red onions as well as some roasted Brussels sprouts. So, let's get cooking. This is just some little like baby potatoes. I get these at Sam's. Um, it's a nice, I think it's like five pounds worth. These are really great to have on hand just for if you wanna make mashed potatoes, roasted potatoes. And I'm gonna chop up some red onion to go with it as well. And we're gonna roast them in the oven with some olive oil, salt, pepper, herbs, stuff like that. And then back here, I also have some Brussels sprouts. I like to get this big bag of them from Sam's. These are getting kind of stressed, so that's why I wanted to use these. And I'm gonna go ahead and roast these on the same baking sheet. I'm gonna do the potatoes on one side and the Brussels sprouts on the other. Let me actually, while I'm thinking about it, go ahead and get my, I'm gonna do 375, I guess. Yeah, we'll do 375. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna do potatoes on one side and Brussels sprouts on the other. And then I have here, this is just some like herb infused olive oil that Ryan's mom made for me. She put like herbs and some peppers and stuff in there. So it's got like really great flavor. And then I'm gonna come in with some ground pink sea salt, some ground black pepper. I really like this flavor on potatoes. I'm also gonna add in some ground sage to it as well. There really is nothing you know, like no wrong seasonings or spices that you can put on here. A little bit more flavor. We're gonna add in some onion salt from Trader Joe's. I love this stuff. It's so good. Not too, too much. like two or three pieces please ignore the dog <laughs> please ignore the dog toy <laughs> um so i have like i would say probably like a pound of brussels sprouts here and what i did was is i chopped up like two or three pieces of bacon and this is ryan and i's favorite way to eat brussels sprouts so i'm just gonna lay the bacon across the top I'm gonna drizzle it with just a tiny bit of olive oil, not a ton, just because the bacon is gonna render out some fat. And I'm gonna go through and just do some crushed black pepper over top, and then also some more, just a tiny bit of salt, not a ton. And then this is like what really makes them decadent, and it's pepper jelly. This is my favorite brand of pepper jelly. It's the Old Homestead. This garlic pepper jelly is my absolute favorite this stuff is the titties y'all i swear if i could get it open hold on there we go all right so i'm gonna take i would say probably like a good tablespoon of it and just put it in this little dish just because we don't have like a ton of brussels sprouts and then i'm just gonna nuke this bad boy in the microwave 
I don't know, like 30 seconds and just let it kind of melt down a little bit. And then we're gonna drizzle it all over the top. I'm just gonna toss these a little bit and make sure all of the Brussels sprouts are coated with the pepper jelly, the oil, salt and pepper, all that good stuff. Okay y'all, so I'm fixing to put my pork tenderloin here in the oven. I have here just like, I would say maybe like a three to four pound pork tenderloin that I have had marinating in this brown sugar bourbon um, grow mates rub that I get um, from Sam's. So what I like to do at Sam's is they have like, usually like a four pack of these pork tenderloins. And what I like to do when I get home is separate them and then put them in the Ziploc bags with some type of seasoning mix, whether it's a rub or garlic and citrus or whatever. And I like to do it a bunch of different ways. That way we have different options. And for this one, I just did some olive oil with this brown sugar bourbon rub, which goes really, really good on pork. And then I just pop these in the freezer. And then what's really nice about those is that whenever I want something quick, um, I can take it out and it's already been marinating. And also when you marinate your meat ahead of time and freeze them, it also kind of starts to tenderize them too. So it's tenderizing your meat even as it's in the freezer and it also starts marinating it as well. So it's one less step that you have to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Try to pour it's it. Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> it overcooked a little bit. That's good. Very good. <laughs> hey guys, and happy Tuesday. So it is, like I said, Tuesday. Um, tonight we are going to be having some red beans and rice. I was really craving this yesterday and I kind of wish I would have made it yesterday. Since yesterday was Monday and that's like the traditional red bean day. Um, but, oh well. The pork was delicious, so I don't mind. Um, I'm gonna show y'all some beans that are absolutely delicious. They're out of the can, but they taste just as good as fresh beans. Um, and it's not all of the prep work and it takes half of the time, so. Say hi. Hi. Okay. This is our cast of characters tonight. Oh, he's over there. He wanted to say, hey, okay. Pipe down, mommy's filming. All right, so this is gonna be our, ch hey, what I said. All right, so this is gonna be our cheat for red beans. If you can find these at your grocery store, I don't know if they're just like at Southern grocery stores, Blue Runner is the hands down best brand for like canned beans. These are their Creole cream style red beans. Absolutely love these. I get like these big cans of them in the red and then the white because this is just so nice to have on a weeknight when you wanna have beans but you don't have the time to do like full on beans. And then here I have some smoked sausage. So our favorite sausage that we buy is Veron. Um, and this is just their regular mild smoked sausage. What I like to do is buy like a big box of it. It's like a three pound box. And I'll break down the links of it and freeze them in these quart uh, Ziploc bags. That way I have enough for just like one can of red beans and it's separated, it's ready to go. So that's perfect. So over here, I just have some remnants of a yellow onion and bell pepper um, from the other night that I didn't use. I have another onion here just because I knew this wasn't gonna be enough. And then I also have some garlic just because I like to add garlic. You could do celery, but I don't have any celery. And then to go with it, we're gonna cook us some basmati rice.
go slap your mama. So a lot of times, like these beans already are seasoned. Like you really don't have to add anything to them, but I love Slappy Mama. Again, I think it's pretty well documented that I can't cook much without adding Slappy Mama to it. It just gives stuff like a really nice like spice and heat and pepperiness. So I'm gonna let those cook down for a little bit and then we're gonna slice up our sausage. And I have a feeling that Mr. over here, you over there with the face, Rico, he's gonna show up because I don't know what it is y'all, but only when I slice and chop this does he show up. It's the funniest thing. Mm-hmm. What I told you. What I told you. This dog never comes in the kitchen when we slice anything other than sausage. That's the only thing he wants. Your sister's right there. We can't set a bad example for her. I'm sorry. Sissy doesn't get table food, so she can't see me feed you this. Poor thing. I'll eat it for him. <laughs> okay. So, we're just going to let this cook down soften and then add in our smoked sausage let that brown up a little bit and then that's pretty much it you just add in the can of red beans I usually like to kind of clean out the can a little bit with some water and just to thin them out because these are pretty thick and I don't like my red beans that thick um, Ryan always makes fun of me because I like red bean soup apparently um, but I like to put some water in the can kind of zhuzh it around pick up all the bits pour that in there and then it's pretty much ready to go I just like to let it boil while the rice cooks because that usually takes about like 20 minutes or so and by the time the rice is done the beans are good and you know cooked down together with the chopped seasoning and the sausage that I can't stop eating but I'm gonna quit I'm gonna quit I'm gonna put it back anyway so that's it really really simple easy weeknight takes like 20 minutes tops maybe like five minutes of prep work love it and if you're interested this is a Le Creuset Dutch oven this is the three and a half quart size I love this size for like weeknights um it's just like the perfect size All right, y'all, so we have our beans here cooking. Oh my God, they look so good. We're just letting them come to a simmer. They smell so good. So now I'm gonna get my rice on. And by the time the rice is done, this is done, we're ready to eat. I mean, this can be eaten right now, really, but the longer I let it simmer, like while the rice and stuff cooks, the better. I was gonna do some cornbread, but totally had a brain fart and realized we don't have any mix and I don't really feel like making it homemade. So this is the rice cooker we use, this Tiger brand. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. This was my uncle's. It is seriously the best rice cooker ever. Um, you can get these off of Amazon, but really worth the money. So I'm gonna make some rice. And Ryan and I for dinner, and I have enough for lunches. I'm gonna do two cups. This is a half cup measure, so I'm gonna get four of these in here. And rice is really simple, because really all it is is for every one part of rice you use, you just add two parts of water. So I have here four cups of water. Ooh, Lord, and I just got it everywhere. For the two cups of rice, we're gonna add a little pat of butter. And then we're gonna also sprinkle in a little salt. You always gotta salt your rice. It is a law somewhere. And I'm just gonna stir this up. Get it all mixed. Pop the lid, press start. It's on quick, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and that's just like the regular rice setting is quick. 
I'm saying. So by the time the rice is done, these will be even better. And yeah, dinner is almost done. Okay, y'all, so it is Wednesday. Happy hump day. I am so excited to be half day, halfway through the work week, and it is a dreary cold afternoon, and something about meatballs and red gravy just sounded really good to me. I had this ground meat that I already had taken out. Originally, I was thinking maybe we could do burgers, but something about meatballs and spaghetti just sounded really good today. So I have just a pound of regular ground beef right here. Rico says hi. Um, and then for seasoning, this is kind of just a random assortment of just a bunch of things that I pulled out. So I have some basil, some oregano, some thyme, onion salt from Trader Joe's, uh, red chili pepper. This stuff is like one of my favorite things ever. It's Paul Prudhomme, if it'll show. This toasted onion and garlic, I love this stuff and it's salt free, so it's great. And then of course some salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix this all together, see how my meat mixture is like holding up and if I feel like it needs something to help bind it a little bit more, I'll add in some breadcrumbs and maybe an egg, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball all of this in and make my balls, meatballs that is. y'all so as y'all saw I got my meat brown my meat browns <laughs> all right y'all so as y'all saw I got my meatballs all browned I just browned them for a few minutes on each side till they got nice and golden and then I added in half of a chopped up yellow onion into the drippings and I just let it saute down for a little bit put a little salt and pepper and then for like my red sauce base of this I'll use good old prego it is a weeknight and you know normally i would like to take the time to like make a good fresh sauce but it's a weeknight we already took the time to make the meatballs so i'm giving myself a little break um but what i am gonna add is just a little bit of these red chili pepper flakes just because i like my red sauce to have a little heat 
I have my oven on. We're gonna have some garlic bread. And this dinner is coming together. So what I'm gonna do is, is add my red pepper flakes in, add in my meatballs, cause they're not all the way cooked through. Add them into the sauce, cover them, um, and let them cook. I'm gonna get my pasta water going and get some noodles made. And by the time that the water like comes to a boil, the noodles cook, this will have had like a lot of time to kind of simmer together and the meatballs will have time to finish cooking through. So that is the plan for now. And if any of y'all are wondering, this is like a deep fry uh, pan from Le Creuset. I love Le Creuset's. I get a lot of questions about the type of pots that I use. You don't have to spend this kind of money on Le Creuset, but I honestly get most of mine like on sale. Um, and to me, it's an investment piece, so it's worth spending the money on it. But you can find these always on like really good sales. And I just like the size, I like how wide this is, but it's not too deep and it's perfect for like this amount of food. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my meatballs in. Turn the heat down, let this simmer, and we'll get our spaghetti going. Now y'all know how I am, so don't let me see y'all forget to take out some of this pasta water and add it into y'all sauce. 